everyone. This is criminal profiler Pat Brown. And this segment of Dear Profiler Pat is, well, here's the question. What is considered rude when sharing a meal with someone? Now, this actually, my answer is really going to be, <laughs> it's a response to a bunch of different questions that were asked all about what do you do when you're invited to somebody's house for a meal? What do you do about inviting people to your house? What restaurant do you pick? There are so many issues about sharing meals with people now. It's gotten crazy. And it's almost like going into a minefield, which didn't used to exist years ago. Now, why do I say this didn't used to exist years ago? Well, culturally, we were in much more compact cultural groups. So I know when I was growing up in the 1950s and 60s, pretty much the people we lived around were, they all looked like me. <laughs> and they all pretty much had similar backgrounds. And everybody ate the same stuff. They did. So if I went to a friend's house, they served meatloaf. I ate meatloaf. They came to my house. You might have spaghetti and meatballs. And they had spaghetti and meatballs. And I went to somebody else's house. And they might have had, oh, I don't know, baked chicken. Okay, we were kind of like, it was pretty standard American food at the time where I lived in New Jersey. Um, and even when I moved down to Virginia, it was there was it was not spicy, I can tell you that, which I, I'm a lover of spice today. I mean, I love spicy stuff, but I grew up with pretty bland food. Um, and so did my friends. They were all, I went to their house. And it was just like my mother cooked. And back in those days, if you lived in an Italian neighborhood, I'm pretty sure you went to another home and you got Italian food. <laughs> and if you were in a Jewish neighborhood, you went to another house and you got kosher food. And if you were, I don't know, wherever you are, whatever group you were with, you probably got food that your mother cooked the same as the mother down the block. So that made it very easy that, first of all, you were used to that food. So when you went to their house, that's what they ate. Now, this is I'm talking about as children, but even as adults. If my parents had somebody over for dinner, nobody questioned the food on the table. Everybody ate it. If they went someplace, they ate what was ever on the table. So nobody had a problem with, oh, my God, how am I going to eat this? Or, gee, some people are coming to my house. What do I serve them? You know, because now we have issues with whether you're a meat eater or you're a vegetarian or you're a vegan. We have a ton of um, allergy issues. Um, and people have celiac disease and they can't eat wheat. And then we got the peanut butter allergies, which when I was growing up, everybody ate peanut butter sandwiches and nobody killed over. I don't know where all the allergies are coming from, but everybody's got them now. Um, they have soy allergies. So don't go eat at a person from, don't go eat at a, a Chinese family's house. <laughs> That'll kill you. You know, so the problem is, what do you do? about the fact that we don't seem to eat very similarly anymore. And there's so much more mixing of people and locations and cultures. And so when you go to somebody's house, I don't know, I say people say, I don't know if I can eat their food. And then when they go to cook something and they're inviting people over, they're like, well, what if they don't eat my food? What if we have to pick a restaurant? What do we do? So it's become so exhausting. It's like, it's like, oh, let's just not bother. <laughs> you know, let's just let's just not hang out with other people. All right. How do I handle this? And how would I recommend you handle this? Well, I look at it this way. Be open, be fair, be reasonable. OK, um, so, for example, let's say you're a meat eater and you're going to somebody's house who doesn't eat meat. I have seen meat eaters go, oh, I can't eat that rabbit food. Yeah, I'm going to go over there. I can't. There's no meat on the table. Hey, look, dude, <laughs> whomever you are, I'm pretty sure you cannot eat meat for one meal. I'm going to guess that's not going to kill you. And if you're really desperate to have meat, eat a hot dog before you go and get it over with, get your meat in your system, and then just go and eat macaroni and cheese or whatever they have. Right? I'm sure you can eat their food. Now, if you're vegetarian and you're having meat eaters come over, what should you do? Well, I'm going to say, serve them food that isn't freaky weird. Okay. Now I like freaky weird food. I, I can eat raw foods. I'm, I'm okay with raw soup. Okay. I, I, mm, I can make some great raw soups. 
Do I serve them to people coming to my house for lunch? No, <laughs> because it'll freak them out. So cook something that is you is fairly palatable to somebody who is maybe eats a lot of meat. You don't have to, I don't, I'm not suggesting you put in fake meat and stuff because they always go, is that fake meat? And that freaks them out. But you, like, it's like macaroni and cheese. Even meat eaters eat macaroni and cheese. They might like to have a pork chop next to it, but they'll eat macaroni and cheese. They will, you know? So pick something that isn't going to freak them out, okay? A cheese pizza, a lot of people can eat a cheese pizza. You, there, there's, there are, there are like, oh, let's see, like, um, uh, like spaghetti, uh, you could make uh spaghetti carbonara just don't put little pieces of meat in it just spaghetti carbonara most meat eaters will eat that so and you can even tell them before they come i know you're a meat eater but we don't serve meat at our in our house so would you have a problem with some spaghetti carbonara and some garlic bread and a salad and the person goes oh okay be kind to the people coming to your house does it, but should you serve the meat if you're a vegetarian no you're not required to do that. Now, if you are the kind of vegetarian who is willing to cook meat in your house and put a pork chop on the side, fine. You know, I, I actually know some people who do this. I know I have some Indian friends, some Hindu Indian friends who are total veg. They're total vegetarian. But I have I have one friend um, and she her husband is not vegetarian and she has cooked for him for like 30 years. She's made him meat, but she never has never touched it and she never tastes it. I don't know how she does it, but she has managed to do that. So people have, we have to respect people's religious views. As for example, if you're having a, a, a Jewish family come to your home and they're kosher, you have to respect that. If they're Muslim, now don't put, don't put a pork, that pork chop on the table. Don't do it. <laughs> and if you don't know, ask them, say, Hey, you know, I don't know what you can and cannot eat. Let me know. Can you can you give me a hint here? And and that that's fine. Let them tell you what what they're comfortable with. And then then if you if you really still don't know, tell tell them the menu and see if they're okay with it. Now, is that a lot of work compared to the old days? Yes, but does it work? Sure, it does. Um, it, it does work. So, if you're vegetarian and you object to meat being cooked in your kitchen, by the way, uh, there are there are certain uh, and it's like in Hindu religion, the Brahmins won't won't eat vegetables that are cooked in pans that have had meat in them. So I actually have had um, friends come to my house who are particular about that. And I actually had to tell them this pan has never had meat in it. So I'm going to cook the vegetarian food in it. And is that okay? Because it has never had meat in it. I know some people have actually brought their own pans <laughs> so that so that meat isn't cooked, hasn't been cooked in them. Okay, what I'm saying is you can talk to people and work it out um, and then say, I want, really want to share a meal with you. I just want to make sure that you're comfortable with what I'm serving um, and, you know, that I'm not putting something on the plate that you cannot eat. You can ask people about their allergies. Do you have any food you cannot eat? And they can say to you, I can't eat wheat. You go, okay, I'm going to be cooking rice and a stir fry. And is there anything in there that would, it's, a, again, a lot of work, but now, if you know people really well, of course, that's not going to be an issue. They can just come to your house and eat whatever crap you put on the table. You go to their house. It's all good. You know each other really well. Maybe your family, you know it, know what, what you're eating. Um, barbecues. I run into, it, People ask about barbecues. Well, barbecues usually entail meat. What, hap, what, does a vegetarian do, what does a vegetarian do who's invited to a barbecue? Well, you have two choices. If, if, if the meat offends you, the smell of the meat, the fact that you're cooking dead animals. If that offends you, don't go to the barbecue. Just simply excuse yourself and say, hey, I don't do barbecues. If, if they're a friend of yours, they'll laugh and go, all righty. <laughs> well, we'll catch you another time. If they're going to be nasty about it, like, oh, you can't go to a barbecue. Hey, we can't keep meat over here. Okay, you don't need them for a friend. <laughs> you know, you just found out about what kind of people they are. Don't, you, know, you don't have to hang around them. Or, or you can say, I'd love to come to the barbecue. Um, uh, do you mind if I bring a veggie burger? And of course, you have to be sure that you're not too opposed to a veggie burger being cooked on a grill that has had, uh, you know, a, a cow on it. You know, <laughs> if that bothers you, then don't put that on the grill. You could say, uh, "Can I? Can I just bring some food along with me that I can eat?" 
a long because I really like to be at the barbecue. I want to have the I want to sit there and have uh, my ties with you or whatever. You know, I'll have your potato salad. I want to have some of that. Is it okay if I bring along? Uh, just make myself a veggie burger before I come and bring it along. Is that okay with you? And they're like, Yeah, we don't care. We're we're serving like you know 25, 30 people. You want to bring your own crap? We don't care. Okay. Now, having said that, what are the vegetarians having a barbecue? Vegetarians do barbecues. Well, they grill. They don't barbecue. They grill. They might grill all kinds of things on the grill. Pineapple on the grill. Veggie burgers on the grill. Is it okay for you to say, I want to bring meat and throw it on your grill? Well, not so much. <laughs> now, you can ask. You can say, look, you know, I know you're vegetarians and, you know, you're going to cook grilled food. Oh, come on now. First of all, you can probably eat it. You know what I'm saying? Again, you can do without meat for one meal. You probably can enjoy whatever they put on the grill. But if you know these people really well, you might say, hey, can, can I bring my own burger, my meat, and they, will you allow me to grill it on your grill or do you not want that meat smell? And the person goes, I don't want the meat smell. Or they say, I don't care. And so, but you, again, have a discussion. Um, what about this? Uh, this is another thing. Um, if you're going to a restaurant, what restaurant do you pick? Again, you got people who have you know vegetarian, not vegetarian. They don't like spicy food. They do like spicy food. If you're going to pick a restaurant together, you, you can work something out. You know, let, let's see what's in town. Let's find a restaurant that appeals to both of us. Um, if you're a, the type of vegetarian who doesn't want to sit in a steak restaurant, even if you're going to have just the uh, the potato, and that person sitting there going. <laughs> you know, <laughs> on a New York, you know, strip steak and it, it offends you and it grosses you out, then tell them, I just get grossed out at steakhouses. Can we go to an Italian restaurant? Uh, can we go to whatever? Does it grow? Does it even gross them out to be across a, the table from somebody who's eating an animal? If that, it, if that bothers them that much, the two of you can decide to go someplace that doesn't have animals eaten, or you can decide not to eat together. You know, you don't have to always eat together. You know, you can do other things. You know, you can have them. Let's say, hey, why don't you come to my house? We'll play cards or we'll play Scrabble. Or we'll do some games. We'll play, we'll play charades. We'll do, you know, Pictionary and we'll have snacks and the snacks will be potato chips and a dip. And you can bring along some veggie snackies too. You know, you don't have to have a full meal. You don't have to do that. You can go for a walk together. You can go to the theater together. You can do all kinds of things that don't involve sitting at the same dining table together if you have that much of an issue. If you're good people, find some other way to enjoy each other's company. It doesn't have to be over food all the time. Okay, one more thing I want to talk about is this. Um, can I bring something to somebody's house? They're serving their meal, and I'm, I want to bring something along. What are you bringing along and have you asked them? I have seen people do this and it, it is, it is rude. Uh, let's say the person, they plan the meal. They say, I'm going to make you this nice meal tonight. And they tell you even what they're going to make. I'm going to make you this, 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 and this. And you show up with a pot of chili. Is that okay? Oh, I was just going to share this with you. No, no, you're ruining their meal. They have planned a specific meal to, to share with you. Uh, maybe it's an Italian meal, maybe it's a Cuban meal, maybe it's uh, whatever meal it is. Maybe it's a straight, straight American meal, but they have planned what to put on the plates, how much of each thing to do. And then you show up with a whole pot of chili that clashes with their food and also says, I I'm not sure I like your food. So I'm going to bring my own food with me and I'll eat more of my food than your food. So it's just rude. Don't do it. Do not bring another dish unless it's a potluck. If it's a potluck, you bring food and then you ask, what, what food do you need? Do you need a main course? Do you need a vegetable? Do you need a dessert? Do you need snacks? Do you need drinks? What do you need? Let's say you're just, that's not a pot like you're just coming to somebody's house. You can always ask, can I bring something along? Can I, is there a side dish you'd love me, love me to bring? Do you want me to bring some kind of bread? Do you want me to bring a loaf of French bread? Uh, do you want me to bring wine? Okay, you can ask that. And then you can even ask, you know, what, what what are you serving? So I bring the right wine. Is there a wine you like? Is there a wine you don't like? You know, it's like, uh, again, just don't just don't just be bringing crap and then forcing it on people. It's not really as polite as you think it is. You oh, I'm being so nice. I'm bringing things. No, a lot of times they just don't know what to do with it, and then they don't know if they have to. They don't really want to serve it. And I say it's like you bring a dessert, but they already made a dessert. 
you know, you've been invited, ask them. And if you can always bring them something else, bring them some flowers, you know, that would be nice. That would be a, that would be a sweet thing to bring, um, bring them some other kind of present. You know, you don't have to bring food and you don't have to bring drink unless you know the people. And then you're like, they, they wouldn't mind an extra bottle of wine. <laughs> and I know they like Sauvignon Blanc. So I'm going to bring them a good Sauvignon Blanc from New Zealand. They'll probably appreciate that. But what if they don't drink alcohol and you show up with your <laughs> bottle of alcohol? Maybe it's inappropriate. Ask. People appreciate being asked and they could say, sure, oh my God, bring some bread, man. I don't, I know I'm cooking dinner and I don't have any bread. It'd be awesome if you bought a loaf of French bread or whatever, you know, bring, so that'd be fantastic. Bring some rolls. That would be neat. So you do that. Um, or they could say, oh, hey, you know, if you'd like to bring a side salad or a side uh, a vegetable dish, that'd be fantastic, you know, or I have no dessert. <laughs> you want to bring a dessert? Do you have a dessert you want to bring? Cool. So for God's sakes, talk to people. If these are people that are your friends, talk to them. Be open and, and be fair and be reasonable. Uh, and and don't, don't, don't be so that you can't eat this and you can't eat that even though you can. Don't be so whiny bird that, you know, everything is like, oh, I'm not used to eating something with a Brussels sprout. Oh, for God's sakes, it's one meal. Suck it up. <laughs> you know, suck it up, eat it. You know, unless it truly is something you cannot eat. And then you should have informed the people of that. Because, again, once upon a time, people just could eat at other people's houses without even having a discussion. But now... If they have lots of issues. And so if you've got those issues, um, you need to talk to people and you need to say, look, uh, I can't eat this and I can't eat that. So don't don't tell a person you can't, you know, you, you, you've got celiac disease. You get to their house and they make a huge pot of pasta for you. <laughs> you know, you're like, oh, I can't eat that. And they're like, thanks. Why didn't you tell me you couldn't eat pasta? You know, now that I made a whole bunch of pasta, what are you going to eat? Oh, I'll have, it to, I'll have that piece of lettuce, you know, <laughs> you know, and I can't eat those rolls either. So. Yeah, I'll have the lettuce. Is it because we live in this world we live in today? Be a little bit open to what you can and cannot eat, or just go and enjoy it. If you, you know, for myself, I'm mostly vegetarian. But if I if I go to somebody's house in another country, and anybody who's been with me knows this, I, in Mongolia, yes, I ate horse. Yes, I did eat. There's a whole bunch of mutton there. And I don't know how to speak Mongolian. So I'm like, okay, that's what I'm eating. Um, I've had donkey. Yes, I have. Okay, so I have eaten a lot of things in a lot of countries. But if I go to a country like India, I've never eaten meat once in India. I've been to India five times and never eaten meat. Why is that? Because in India, it's very, very common for people to say, are you veg or non-veg? If you go to a restaurant, you open up the menu, it has veg on one side and non-veg on the other. Simple as all get out. If you're a vegetarian, just eat vegetarian food. But there are certain countries where, like Mongolia, where there is almost no vegetarian food. So my my idea is there is a don't go to Mongolia if you're a vegetarian because you're going to suffer. And you shouldn't be rude. You shouldn't go to people's homes and refuse everything they have to offer because that is all they have to offer. Do, do your research before you go and decide whether this is an appropriate place for you to go to. And I, I, I've been raising, oh, I'm not raising, my daughter's raising my granddaughter. But one of the things I tell my granddaughter, I take her to a lot of foreign restaurants and I say to her, if you can eat this food, I can take you to that country. <laughs> yeah. So far, she can go to Mexico, she can go to India, and she can go to West Africa. So far, one of the countries in West Africa, she can eat Cameroonian food and Nigerian food. So she can do that. Um, because I say to her, I can't take you someplace. And then you're rude to the people who live there. You know, oh, I, I can't eat that. Mm -hmm. You know, that kind of stuff. No, no. If you can't eat it, don't go there. And same thing. If you can't go to somebody's house and eat their food, don't go there and insult them. You know, but be open when you're going to somebody's house or you're having somebody at your house. Be open about food issues if you got them. Ask if they have any food issues because everybody does these days. Or, or plan something that it doesn't matter. Do an activity that food isn't involved in or the kind of food that would be a problem isn't involved in. Uh, or say, pick a restaurant where both of you are comfortable and you can eat whatever you darn well please. Do that. And teach your children not to be a pain in the butt. All right. <laughs> I have to put that in there because, man, it's nothing like kids coming over to your house and I don't eat vegetables. I don't eat that. I don't eat this. It's like, <sighs> teach 
teach your children that they can eat things too, as long as they're not allergic to them. <laughs> to teach them have a wide variety and it, it makes life a lot easier. All right. So that's my thoughts on that. It's a weird, it's a weird uh, deer profiler pap, but I, people did ask me these different ways about food issues because it's such a part of our lives. So I put them all together and that's my advice to you all. And I hope you appreciated it. Uh, I'll be curious about your comments below, how you've dealt with things like this. Uh, and uh, if you are new to the channel, please do subscribe. Uh, please do like this video. Please do click the bell for notifications and check my different playlists. You know, profile, Dear Profiler Pat is just one. I have, I'm doing a whole series on the murder of Cleopatra, which is uh, my all my uh, research and the book I wrote on the, the life and death of Cleopatra. I'm doing a whole series on that. Check my playlist for all the crime, the crime uh, cases I do. And, you know, there's other stuff here, so check it all out. And I'll see you another time for, for another Profiler Pat. Bye.